Pal stave axes come from the European Middle Bronze Age, and that's around about 1500 to 1000 BC. And they'd be used for tree felling and carpentry. Pal stave axes have some specific features that sets them apart from other kinds of axes, and there's two main ones really. The first is this stopper ridge that's just above my finger here, and that actually stops the axe head being forced back into the wooden haft or handle as it's been used, because the more it'd be used otherwise, the axe head could force its way back and split the handle, so we wouldn't want that, and that stopper bar prevents that acting like a wedge. The other key feature is this loop here, but not all PAL staves have these. This loop allows you to tie the axe head back onto the handle to prevent the axe head flying off. And that may be an example of a bit of Bronze Age health mitigation because someone's work partner got walloped by a flying axe head or someone lost their axe head in the undergrowth and just couldn't locate it. So needed to find some way around that. In the Bronze Age, you get lots of different types of molds. The first kinds of molds that we get are stone open-sided molds for flat axes. And as well as stone moulds, we're also getting clay moulds that continue right into the end of the Bronze Age and beyond, almost up until the recent day. From the Middle Bronze Age onwards, we get a new kind of mould made of bronze or copper alloy that were mainly made for axe heads, although we do get spear heads and woodworking tools as copper alloy moulds too. But what are the pros and cons of using these different types of moulds? Well, this is where experimental archaeology can start to answer some of these questions, because stone moulds take very specific kinds of stone from very specific locations and take a long time to carve out. Clay, although the raw material is more widely available, takes much longer to dry over its quite easy sculpting method that doesn't take long at all. And you then have to fire it and that might not be successful. So there are certainly pros and cons in just the production. In terms of use, clay you can only generally use once, twice, and if you're lucky, three times of very, very simple shapes. So the reusability of clay is very poor. What we're finding with experimental procedures with these copper alloy moulds is that although there's a huge amount of investment to create the template, then use clay to make a mould mould of one side, and then go through the process to make the other half with another mould mould, once you've actually got your mould, made of bronze copper alloy you can actually reuse it over a long period of time and previous experimental research has found that for socketed axes from the late bronze age you get quite a few use stages out of it before it starts to show any deterioration in the mold of any kind as far as i'm aware and i may be wrong please correct me if i'm wrong no one's actually tried casting a palstave axe into a copper alloy mould before. This might be the first time it's been done in around 3,000 years. And what I'm finding as I go through the process is little tricks, any details in the way that I'm having to use certain tools to open it and whether that might leave marks on my tools that might correlate with ancient examples. So we can start to learn about how toolkits start to appear and develop around the process of other tools being made. And all of this feeds into that understanding of experimental archaeology that we just can't really get from anywhere else. And as I keep using these moulds, I'll hopefully start to learn more about how they deteriorate possibly, the temperatures I need to use whether there are any things that I can use to improve these because although it's a good cast as you can see with this there's quite a significant heavy flash around the outside of this this sort of frill and as I get a bit more experienced with these hopefully I can make better molds and reduce that flash and there's lots of prep involved before you actually cast and use one of these molds but all of that prep is going to remain a trade secret for now as I go through this continued research